Hello everybody, Rwan here from Tunnel Vision TV and welcome to tonight's stream. Let me just get some lights going here. That's a bit better. How's it everybody? How's everyone doing tonight? Uh, let me just get the volume here sorted. I think the music is a little bit loud. Maybe something like that right so tonight we are going to try and model a x-wing starfighter a uh, little star wars model so let's see how that goes so i'm just gonna jump straight into blender and i changed my setup a little bit i've got two monitors going now so i can actually see see my stream on this side and i can see the chat there so if you guys have any questions or suggestions or anything like that or any concerns just let me know in the chat and we can chat about it i've got some coffee cheers ah. all right so welcome everyone here is the little reference image i actually like to have this inside of blender on the side so i just created a uh, what do you call it the image editor here on the side and you can load any picture and you can use that as a reference which which is pretty cool so i think let me just delete lights and camera we don't need that um so we're obviously going to mirror this thing because as you can see it's symmetrical on on both sides so that's good so let me just check everything's working a eh? audio yeah i think everything is pretty good and nothing is on mute so here we go so i've got this add-on installed where uh which is called auto mirror so i'm just going to enable that on this cube and it's going to mirror across the x-axis so now if we do anything on this side it's going to do the same on the other side which is pretty nice so if anyone hey celesti hello hello welcome welcome so if anyone's watching um i just want to ask one little favor all you have to do you don't have to subscribe to the channel all you have to do is just click on the little like um, button underneath the video and that will really 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 help me a lot because um, YouTube's algorithm changed quite a bit now nowadays subscribers don't really matter so it's all about the, the likes so let's see what we're gonna do here so first of all I'm gonna just move this face backwards to get kind of that shape of the front of the ship that we're gonna make um, and then let's add some loop cuts straight away so I'm gonna start with a loop cut probably in front and then maybe let's place a loop cut around here for that section where we're gonna create the cockpit or this window section and then maybe let's place another one right here for that section right there okay so let's see how how that's gonna work i'm just gonna start with the basic shapes first and uh, then we take it from there so this first edge or this front edge i'm going to just move down slightly so we get that kind of pointy in the front and uh, same with this one we're just going to move that down slightly so it comes up quite a bit here in front and uh, then it's slightly increasing to about there so i'm just going to push that down like that and then maybe if we just select those edges and we just slide them by pressing gg and then i can maybe move this one up slightly so we have that and then we obviously maybe just need to move this back so i'm going to level these two edges so that edge and this edge i'm going to level out so um what we're going to do is we're going to do a an s and a z so scale in the z and then zero 
and then I'm gonna move both of these up and then I'm gonna move this face backwards. Something like, like that. We might need to change these proportions later on, but for now, that's good. So let's just move this one down slightly to make it a bit sharper. Okay, let's see what we can do here. So I'm gonna start by adding a loop cut on the side, maybe just one for now and then i'm gonna just select that section and just move it out slightly so g and x let's just see if that works maybe no what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take those vertices and yeah just those three and i'm gonna move them out just to get a little bit of a rounder shape like so and uh i think we can maybe start with a with the wings on this side and see how that goes so i'm gonna add another loop cut somewhere around here and then maybe another one here at the bottom and then we can see if we can maybe bevel these edges to create that wing so you can probably do that I know this is not the best geometry or the best way to do it, but that's fine. We're not going to go for uh, perfect geometry. So I'm going to take that face and let's just bevel this edge as well. So I'm going to bevel that one out slightly. So that's going to be for the bottom wing. That's going to be for, for the top wing right there. And... Uh, yeah, let's just extrude those and see what happens. So I'm going to take both of, both of these uh, faces and then I'm going to scale these two faces in the y-axis. So S and Y, we scale them slightly in. Uh, maybe, maybe a bit more, but yeah, let's just scale them down slightly. This part is also too big, like from from that edge to this edge uh, we need to make them definitely a little thinner as you can see here they're not as thick where they come out of the ship so let's see what we can do here maybe let me undo these extrusions first and let's do a loop cut around this area and another loop cut around this area and then let me just slide slide this one back slightly and then we can extrude those two so let's do that yeah i think that works better <clears throat> and then i'm gonna scale y to bring them in slightly maybe not as far out like so and then i just want to straighten these two faces as you can see they're not straightened so you can just select them and then scale in the X axis, so SX and then zero, just to make them nice and flat. Right, so we have we have something. We've got a we've got a wing. Um, okay, so now we need to just separate these two wings. As you can see, they are slightly angled. So the one angles up, the one angles down. So I think we should be able just to take these two faces and I'm just going to scale them in the Z uh, I don't really want to do that because it actually makes them a little thicker so I'm going to do one at a time so this one and then GZ and I'm just going to move it up slightly like so and this one GZ and then move it down to around there Okay, I think this nose section is a uh, proportions are a little weird, but I think we're okay. I think I'm just gonna make this front section thinner. So if we select, uh, let me just see. Uh, so if we select all of those edges and I scale them in, so S and X to make the point 
a little bit sharper and then maybe this section and select all those edges and make them a little smaller as well so just a normal scale and then s x and then maybe maybe this top and bottom vertices just move them in as well so s x uh no i think that's all right g x yeah something weird is going on here So let me just straighten out this bottom section. So if we click on this one vertex here in the corner and you press N on the keyboard and you go to item, you can see the global position of that uh, vertex. So as you can see, the Z value is minus one. So I can just copy that. And then we can just select this vertex and paste it right there. And then that's going to be the same Z value. I'm going to do the same with that one right there at the bottom, minus one. Just to flatten out the, the bottom of this, of this thing. Okay, so we have our basic shape for the wings. Um, I think what we can do next is maybe let's start working on this window area right here so for this one we're going to do an inset so if you do an inset and you want to include the border or exclude the border you do a alt b i think yeah so alt b and then that will eliminate the border on the inside of your mirror so i'm just going to do something like that and then i'm going to extrude that inwards and then I'm just going to make it a slightly thinner. So I'm going to take those, or I can actually just take this, this face and then just move it in. So G and X, GX, like so. Obviously these edges should be closer as well. So I'm going to see if I can move this one in. So GX, maybe move them into around there and then we can see if we can do the the side window as well so these two edges i'm gonna dissolve them so x and then dissolve edges and i'm gonna do the same with this one so dissolve edges we're gonna lose that one edge right there in the middle but that's fine and then for this one let me just see what we can do yeah i think if we connect those two vertices so if you want to connect two vertices you just select them and then press uh, y, uh j j on the keyboard and that's gonna connect those those vertices and this vertice right there i'm gonna move that down maybe i can select both of those and pull them down slightly and then we have this face where we can try and create uh this this window so I'm going to inset, inset that like so and we can probably take these two vertices here in front and then just make them slightly closer to each other like that and then I can ins or, uh, extrude this. It still looks a little big so I'm going to scale them, uh, let's move those two back and these two a little forward and this one should go down and so I'm just doing some some free moving here and then this section is going to be the side window so I'm just going to extrude that inwards okie dokie so I'm going to close that panel by pressing in on the keyboard and then I'm going to move this face just back because I think it looks a bit strange where it's at currently. Alright, so let's see if we can create this small window behind it. So it's not going to be exactly the same. Um, as I always say, I just use these 
things as a reference and then sometimes I just go and I create kind of my own my own little thing so I'm gonna insert this as well and um, I think let's move these two forward like that yo that's that's not straight so if you want to straighten these vertices you just do a uh, SX for scaling in the X axes and I actually want to move them in as well uh, and in this one we can move in as well because I don't really want them to be perfectly straight and this one I'm gonna move out slightly and then we can use that as our window and I'm gonna extrude that like so okay so let's look at these wings what are we gonna do here so we can start adding some details on the top wing maybe first so I'm gonna do a a loop cut right around here and I'm gonna take this face um, let's just see the scale of this thing. It's always important to check your scale of your object and make sure it's 111. If it's not, then you go to Object, Apply, and then you just apply that scale. And that will just make your life a lot easier. <coughs> Especially when you're doing insets or extrusions or anything like that. Then it will work better. So for this one, I'm going to do an inset. And uh, then maybe let's do a extrude straight up no idea what I'm doing and then uh, another inset and then maybe do a extrude inwards so we have some details there and uh, let's see what else we can add in the meantime before we start with those engines so here on top we see all these little details right there so I'm gonna use this face and maybe this face here at the back and insert them we still have the the border switched off so if i press ctrl b you'll see we get an inset like that but if i press ctrl b it's gonna go against the border of my mirror which is pretty cool so i'm just gonna take a section here like this and then just extrude that inwards and this is where we can uh, then create these details that's in this area of the ship so let's zoom out and let's do a save always very important save 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 it still feels a little bit out of proportion i think the wings should be bigger so let's do that so i'm going to select these two faces and then just move them out so uh, GX and maybe we can move this one up slightly and this one down slightly like so I've no idea what the back is actually doing I probably need to get another reference but let's yeah this just feels way too tall so I think if we select all of these Mm -hmm. I wonder if I can dissolve these edges. Let me just try this first. So X, dissolve edges. Yeah, that's all right. Um, and then I'm going to see if I can select those three edges and scale them. Ah, that's not going to work. So I wonder, are these loose? Hmm. see what we're gonna do here so if I maybe take those and uh, we'll probably have to take everything and then move them scale them up so uh, we need to make it a lot thinner here at the back so let's start with by this section I'm just gonna scale it downwards um, mm -hmm. I'm already making my life difficult with this super ugly geometry. You just have some coffee. Maybe that will help. Alright. So, what are we going to do here? So, I'm going to move 
these vertices at the bottom and maybe that one and maybe these two as well i'm gonna move them up and see and see what happens so gz move them up i don't want to overlap any other vertices so this one should probably go up and maybe out so that's gx uh, let's see what's going on here so maybe these three and those three can move them up so this is gonna kind of move the wing as well and then we need to move these three maybe these four as well just gz probably breaking this model right now but you know what I don't know. Let's see what we do. <laughs> okay, that's starting to look very strange. I don't think that angle is right. Um, let's move this up. And then this one a little up. And I just think it's not, it's too thick. Like the, from the top to the bottom, it's too, too thick. So I'm just going to move these up as well. And uh, then we probably want to move these, maybe all of them. Move them up. Let's just have a look from the side. So that's our ship from the side. Yeah, you see it's completely weird. So I'm going to just select all of those, move it up and kind of level it out like that. And then this I'm going to move up. So it's kind of in the center. I think that's already looking a little bit better. Um, I'm going to move some of these things up. So I'm selecting all of these vertices and I've got uh, X-ray X -ray on. So I'm selecting everything through it. And then GZ and you can just kind of move that, move that up. And yes, that is looking all right. Okay, so we've got that basic. I think this nose thing is still too too long maybe no yeah maybe i don't know maybe not um just look at it from the side again i'm gonna take these vertices again and kind of just free move them to kind of get this angle looking a bit more like streamlined if that's the word okay yeah I'm gonna just gonna leave it like that for now all right so wings so we've got the little block or the box here that we can add detail uh, later on whoops and um, maybe let's start adding. We can probably start adding some of the engines now, but maybe let's add some of these extrusions on the bottom wing. So for that, I'm just gonna do a simple little loop cut. Maybe one there, one here, and then maybe another one closer and one there and then I can take this face inset it's kind of this area here just push that in and then for this one I need to add another loop cut uh, maybe right there and one on this side and then I can take this face inset and then extrude that in so we we can add a lot of those kind of details later on I'm gonna save that uh, so we can add a lot of those details later on maybe let's add another little bit of detail here on this top wing so I'm gonna make a loop cut here another loop cut here and another loop cut there I always make too many loop cuts so I'm gonna take those ones and see if we can do something here if I inset them slightly 
and then we do extrude inwards maybe not too much just adding some subtle details always helps a bit so I think we are ready to maybe start doing one of these engines um, now I just need to decide if I'm gonna add extra geometry or if I'm gonna try and model them kind of to be connected I don't think we have to do that we can always just join it later on because um, it's gonna be quite interesting adding them into this geometry if, if, if you know what I'm saying okay so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna select this face and I'm gonna press shift s and then I'm gonna select cursor to select it so sorry I just want to check something here yeah the volume is still still pretty good so I'm gonna place the 3d cursor right there so now if i create any new geometry i'm still in edit mode so it will create it inside of this of this object so if i go to let's create a cylinder you can scale that down and you can see the mirroring is still working because we're inside the same object which is nice so i'm going to rotate it x and then we're going to rotate it 90 so it's rx90 O to rotate like that and um, <laughs> we can scale them up slightly let's just see proportion wise yeah they should be quite a bit bigger so maybe like that if we look from the front I'm just gonna move it out to maybe around here and uh, then we need to move this section backwards so GY like maybe till around there and then we can insert this front face and then just do a extrude maybe scale that down and then maybe insert it again extrude outwards and then scale zero to get my that little sharp point right there so we've got those basic engines and then one at the bottom as well I'll probably just duplicate this one um, maybe let's add some details first and then we can duplicate it so I'm gonna add some loop cuts just to add some interesting details so maybe one here at the front like that and then maybe let's add one here in the middle and kind of one somewhere around there so for this front section i'm just going to select all of these faces around so you just uh, press alt and then click that's going to select that um that loop of faces and then we can just extrude them inwards so the best way to do that because you can't just go extrude now because it's going to either extrude everything in one direction so you don't want to do that you want to select them and then you want to do a alt e and then you can select extrude faces along normals and that's basically going to either extrude them all outwards or all inwards so i'm just going to pull them in something like so but yeah at the back i'm probably just going to select some of these faces maybe from there to around there you just hold in control and then it will select everything in between as well maybe that one as well and let's do an inset and we're gonna do a normal extrusion just to kind of pull them all down like so and then at the back let's see what we're gonna do here so at the back we've got these small little uh, yeah let's add one more loop cut there and then we can maybe select those two faces those two those two those two and those two and then whoops let's insert insert them maybe want to pull them out so i'm going to do a alt e and then extrude along normals and then pull them out slightly and then I want to scale them down but I don't want to scale them 
leave like that because currently the um, the origin or the scaling origin is set to median point, which means it's going to scale the it's going to it's going to basically put the the pivot point in the center of all these faces. But if we do individual origins, then you will see we can scale them all individually. So that's pretty cool. So you can add stuff like that. Maybe let's add some more of those faces here. So I'm going to add maybe, let's see what we can do here. Maybe just one, one or two at the top. So maybe that one and that one. <coughs> those two. So I'm going to basically let's see uh, uh extrude along normals so alt e bring them out like that and then i'm going to scale them in and i'm still on individual origins scale them in uh maybe something like that let's do a save okay so we've got our basic front engine I'm not sure what happens here at the back. This smaller engine, it looks like it's coming out of that one, but it's it's smaller and it's kind of at the top. So it kind of comes out somewhere here on the side and then that goes out. I'm not sure, not sure, not sure, but we'll see when we get there. So I think for the basic engine, that's, not too bad i think we can duplicate it now so what i'm going to do because this this section or this engine is not connected to the rest of my geometry i can literally just click on one of these faces and then with a the mouse pointer hovering above it just press l to select all the the linked faces and then with that we can duplicate it so shift d and then i want to move it down so z to move in the z axis and then we just need to place it kind of under, underneath the, the wing. So GZ, move it down. And maybe we need to rotate it so that those fins are at the bottom. So I'm going to do an R and a Y. Uh, okay, this is looking kind of strange. So let's just change this origin back to uh, median point. And I think we just need to set the pivot because I'm not sure where this thing's pivot is. Oh, you yeah, see the pivot is there in front. So I'm going to right click. And uh, yeah, we can't set the pivot right here because you need to make this sec this thing. F yeah, let's, let's do it. Let me show you guys how to do that. So if you want to select everything again, so L to select linked faces. And then we're going to right click and go to separate selection so that's going to separate this from this model so if we now go into object mode you'll see that's a separate object uh, we're probably going to break our mirroring now um, <laughs> yeah probably gonna gonna do that <clears throat> so let's see if i uh, looks like it's got the mirroring is still working yeah so i'm going to try and right click on this set origin to geometry mm, and that's going to break our mirror so no can't do that undo 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 and i'm just placing it back into this model so that's all fine so i'm just going to rotate it as we as we did earlier so r and then y so we're just going to rotate it around so maybe 180 and then we just need to position it into place. So if we look at it from the front, maybe kind of like that. Uh, I'm not sure if we want to see the top of this thing coming through there. So I'm just going to pull it down slightly so we don't see it like that. And maybe we need to do the same with the top one so it doesn't stick out here at the bottom. Uh, do, 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 do. well we can see the engine there so maybe let's move this up so we need to see that it feels like this thing is not aligned let's look at it from the bottom yeah it's looking all right and from the top mm, yeah it's looking all right not too bad 
maybe let's try doing these engine sections here at the back. Maybe, maybe that's gonna do something. Alright, so let's go to the back here and I'm going to select this face, shift S, cursor to select it to place my cursor right there and then I'm going to create another cylinder, scale it down, rotate in the X axis 90 degrees and then I want to move it kind of to the corner of that thing so I'm going to first scale it down and then G and I want to move it um, in the X and the Z, so I'm going to do a shift Y, so it's excluding the Y axis, so I can only go X and Z, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to take that and uh, let's just move that face back, so G, Y, maybe... Mm, we'll probably push this back inwards later on. I'm not sure what we're going to do do there, but yeah. For now, that's fine. I'm going to scale this out slightly. And then let's add some loop cuts, because I'm sure we are going to add some, some details around this part of the engine. Maybe something like that. And then do a inset. I don't really have to do an inset here, but anyways. And then extrude along normal, so maybe let's bring these two out, like that. And then maybe let's do another inset. And you can hold in shift if you want to adjust it in smaller increments. So, uh, let's take this in. So I'm going to extrude along normals again, and then push that inwards. So we kind of get this, this edge thing going. And then maybe at the back, let's just pull this in. So inset, and then extrude that in, and then scale that down. So we kind of have some of the proportions are good. Um, yeah, I don't think it's too bad. <coughs> then obviously we have these little weapons or the guns or missiles or whatever you call them on the edges of the wings so we'll add them soon but let's just make sure we are happy with the maybe let's add some details yeah not sure why this thing feels like it's not aligned but in any case so i think let's select some of those faces and those faces and those faces, let's inset them and then we can do it just an extrusion downwards and maybe let's add some details <coughs> inside as well. So ex inset those and then maybe take them, mm, now nah, that doesn't really make sense. Welcome Niku, welcome, welcome. So, <clears throat> let's see what we still need to do here. So we probably need to do the same with the bottom ones, uh, what I've done here at the back. Uh, we could have duplicated n this now, so maybe I should. Let's delete this bottom, uh, no, <laughs> already added that now. So I'm going to just kind of do the same thing here, I'll make it slightly different or what we can do this part is actually loose so yeah let's just do this so i'm gonna you just press l to select everything sel or linked to those faces and then i'm gonna do shift d to duplicate and then z to move it down and then maybe let's place these ones more at the bottom like so save okay so we've got our basic engines going Um, yeah, let's see if we can maybe start with one of these missiles on the side. 
Let's see how we're going to do them. So maybe let's start with this one. So I'm probably going to do it the same way as I did the engines. So pretty easy. I'm just going to place my uh, 3D cursor here. So with those spaces selected, press Shift S and then cursor to select it. And there you can see there's our 3D cursor. So if we create any new geometry, it's going to create it right there. So now I'm going to go Shift A, cylinder, and we want to rotate that in the X axis. So RX 90, scale them down quite a bit, maybe like that. And then we're going to just take these faces or that face and this face, move it out like so. Maybe move that back slightly. Just want to see the size. Yeah, that's maybe not too bad. Uh, and then we want to insert this section at the back, extrude that out, maybe scale it up slightly and then inset again by pressing i and then e to extrude move it in and then sc s to scale scale it down so we have that back section and uh, maybe let's add some of these details so this circle going around here so let's make a little loop cut right there and i'm going to select all those uh, faces so alt click to select that loop and then we're gonna do an inset and we're gonna do a alt e extrude along normals and take that inwards just a bit like so and then we're gonna do another two loop cuts here in front so loop cut about there and a loop cut about there. Let's select all of these ones, alt click, and then we're gonna inset, and then alt E, extrude along normals, move that inwards, hold in shift to do a small, uh, smaller increments. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then this face, I'm gonna scale down slightly, and then we're gonna inset, inset that all the way and then I want to pull this missile or whatever you call this pull this out um, maybe to around here yes let's do another save 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 and then we need to do this little front bit let's see what's happening here so here we can do a extrude and then a S to scale. So scale that out and then extrude again and then S to scale that down. Um, to focus on a certain part of your object with those faces selected, you just press full stop on your numpad and then it's gonna kind of rotate around that. It's also gonna zoom in. So if you wanna kind of work on that section, you select something there, press full stop and it's gonna zoom in and rotate which is pretty handy. It's probably one of the shortcuts that I use the most. So, okay, we've got that. Then we need to inset that again, nice and small. I wanna pull that out. Like, well, that's maybe a little bit too far, maybe like that. And then scale that down to around there. Okay, and then this little moon, half moon thingy. Um, yeah, I love doing loop cuts. Loop cuts, loop cuts, loop cuts, loop cuts, loop cuts. <laughs> um, <laughs> how are we gonna do that? So that's probably just a half cylinder. Mm, yeah. So what we can do is we can select all of those. Yeah, shift S, cursor to select it, and I'm gonna create a new cylinder, scale it down, and we're gonna rotate around the Y axis, so RY 90, and we're gonna move that forward, so G and Y, and now what we need to do here 
think we need to, sorry, I'm probably taking a very slow, long way of doing this. But anyway, so I'm going to inset that and then I'm going to delete those two. And then we can just connect these two uh, loop, uh, what do you call it, like uh, a loop. So I'm going to alt click on that loop and then shift alt click to select that one. And then we can bridge them. So right click and then you can bridge your edge loops to get that. And then we need to look at it from the front, switch on X-ray. And then we're going to delete everything in front like that. So let's just X and then faces. And then we can go out of X-ray mode and then we can just bridge those, those faces. So hmm, I can probably delete those ones as well. So maybe the, uh, that, that that and that same with this one this one this one this one and delete and then we can oops select that edge that edge and then press f to fill them f for full and f for full there we go so now we just need to make it thinner on the x-axis so sx scale it inwards and maybe like so okay that's not too bad let me just put the 3d cursor back to the origin uh cursor to world origin there we go and let's save okay so we have our one little missile which is looking okay uh, what we can do is maybe add some details here in the center so I'm gonna make a, another little loop cut right here and maybe let's add another loop cut right there and I'm gonna select all those faces and I'm just gonna scale them in so scale them no, Alt S. Yeah, Alt S will basically do that. So we're gonna just pull them in slightly. So it's a little thinner than the, the front section. And maybe if we wanna be fancy, we can do a little inset around here and then extrude that inwards. Just adding more details, 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 details. So maybe we can do the same here. So I'm gonna inset this as well and extrude that in. And why not do a little inset here as well. And maybe Alt E, extrude along normals, pull that out. And then another inset and then Alt E along normals, pull them in. Sure, okay, that's looking a bit crazy, but that's that's cool. <clears throat> so now we can probably duplicate that missile and place them on the bottom wing as well. So this one will go below the bottom wing. So pretty easy. Let's save and let's just uh, hover above it. Press L to select your linked, linked faces like so. Ah, we need to select that little part as well. And then you just do a shift D and then Z to move it down. Let's have a look from the front. Uh, and then GZ to move it down to around here. Yeah. Something like that. That's starting to look like, uh, like something, I think. I think it looks okay for now. Um, I think the proportions are still a little out, but yeah, we can always fix that a bit later. So now we need to add more details. Um, if you guys have any ideas, put them in the comments. Put them in the comments. So this front section, I'm not sure what else to do here, like detail-wise. We can probably add some, um, some, some loop cuts. <laughs> some loop cuts let's just add more loop cuts and then maybe select 
all of these faces, full stop to zoom in there. And we can do an inset. And I'm sure you can model everything or anything by just using uh, inset or loop cuts and insets and extrudes. Those three, you can, you can do anything. So Alt E along normals, and I'm gonna pull that in. So we get something like that, looking pretty cool. And then maybe, see at the front, they've got this little thing going here. I'm not sure if I like that, but maybe let's just do a little inset here. So inset, and then remember to press Control B to get that boundary for your mirror, like so. And then what we can do is we can probably take this edge, pull it down. Mm, no, let's rather do a, a extrude downwards like that. Uh, full stop to zoom. And then we can take this edge and just move it up slightly to around there. So we're getting something like that. Yeah. Cool. So let's save, 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 save. So I'm still not sure what to do here at the back. As you can see, this back section is looking uh, pretty bad because I'm not sure what to do here. But maybe let's start by, there's some very strange geometry here that I don't like. Maybe I need to delete some of these faces. Maybe I need to get rid of these faces. Uh, let's see what happens. Delete faces. Oh no, let's not do that. Um, let's move this vertex down. And let's move this one up. We can probably do a GG and slide them. That's probably a better thing to do. We can move this one up as well. And this one we can move up as well. Something like that. And this one we can probably move mm -hmm, backwards a bit. I don't know. I'm just doing some random, random stuff there. How's everyone, everyone doing tonight? It's Friday at last. All right, so <laughs> we need to do something here at the back. So those engines are, I think this whole thing just needs to be pushed inwards. So I'm gonna take those three, maybe level them out. So S, Y, and then zero. So they're all leveled out. And then G, Y to move them inwards. But then we have a little bit of a problem there because I need to select that face as well. And then I can move it all inwards, maybe to around there. And then maybe we can just scale this in. I don't know, I don't know what else to do here. Maybe one big engine here at the back. Not sure. Not sure. Let's just level out these ones a bit better. Yeah, I think that's 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 fine. Just to have kind of flat, flat back. So, what else can we add? Um. So we've got the front. I'm just going to make the front a little bit sharper. So if we select all of these, those little vertices right here, I can just pull them in. So G, X, pull them inwards to make the point a bit sharper. And then we can probably scale these edges, S and Z, to make them sharper like that. And then maybe let's take uh, that edge, those two edges, pull them down 
some aerodynamics. I don't think you need them in space, but that's something for another day. Um, hello, Mr. Boyan Box. And uh, yeah, it's a long weekend. Well, not for me. I work UK hours or UK, I get UK holidays. So even though I'm in South Africa, um, I work for a company that's kind of based in the UK. So yeah, but enjoy the long weekend if you're in South Africa. Uh, ZBrush. Yeah, ZBrush is amazing and crazy and complex and you can create some amazing stuff with it. But um, you must actually check out the, because I know Blender is kind of stealing a lot of um, the, the sculpting brushes from ZBrush currently. Not stealing, they creating their own, and but they they kind of see what people are using in ZBrush. So yeah, uh, Blender is not bad for sculpting. It's getting better and better with almost every every release. Um, but yeah, I haven't been doing a lot of uh, sculpting. I want to get into it a bit more, maybe someday soon. But yeah, I, I've played around with, uh, what's the other one called? Uh, Mudbox, um, the Autodesk one, <coughs> which is not bad, but I think it's kind of discontinued. I don't think they release any new versions of that. But yeah, ZBrush is really good if you want to get into sculpting. ZBrush is still definitely the way to go. But if you are learning Blender, maybe look at the sculpting in Blender. You might be pleasantly surprised. Um, I'm just going to add some more details here on f in the front. So I'm going to add some more loop cuts here. Maybe let's add one here. And then let's select all of those faces. And let's do an inset. And we've got the boundary on still. And then I'm going to do an Alt-E. Extrude inwards maybe another one of these cool yeah I think it's looking looking okay ish for a quick little how long have we been streaming now I never know where to look uh, I don't know we started at 8 and it's uh, almost an hour so yeah not too bad for an hour of modeling I think but yeah, I'm very slow when it comes to modeling. I kind of take my time and I don't like to rush. So I think let's add some more, some more details here. So control R to create a loop cut and another one right there. And then maybe let's select all of these faces all around. And then let's do a famous inset like so and this time we're going to pull it out so alt e along normals pull it out and this is all wonky what's going on here oh uh, you know what so i'm gonna hmm, undo that see what happened here when we did a inset it kind of messed it up that's interesting so uh -huh -huh. undo undo that because it's kind of scaling inwards it's going from yeah it's, it's scaling inwards that might be causing an issue when we do an inset um, I wonder <laughs> uh, inset control B no that's not gonna do anything see it's kind of insetting it uh, I wonder if I can change Offset individual. Uh, no, that's. Uh, we can do individuals and then we can do long normals and then maybe bring that out. Add some funky funkiness there and maybe something at the bottom as well. Uh, what's the chat doing? Yeah, it's got some amazing uh, sculpting actually. Really, really cool sculpting. Um, and you can do, you can export STL as well. It's There's actually a plugin, a uh, free plugin that you can add if you go to your preferences 
and I think you just search for 3D printing. It's got all the, the like the 3D printing um, tools, so you can basically check if um, if your model has any holes or all of, all of those things, and you can export straight to STL. Um, even the newer, there's a different format that they're using nowadays for 3D printing. I'm not sure what it's called, but you can either export STL or the newer format. So yeah, it's all there. I tell you, Blender's gonna Blender's gonna take over. <laughs> That's just my opinion, but I think Blender's gonna take over because um, the user base is growing so fast because it's free. So and there's so many people working on amazing plugins. There's a, <clears throat> a plugin that someone created the other day that you can take your iPhone and you can use your iPhone as your camera. So you can install the app and it connects to Blender um, through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or whatever. And then you can literally use your phone and you can kind of move it around and it will synchronize with the Blender camera. So you can do all your camera moves hand out, which is freaking amazing, <clears throat> I think. But uh, yeah. Cool, so I'm just adding random details here <clears throat> to maybe, 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 maybe at the top. Maybe let's add some, some more details here. So we're going to insert this, and this time I don't want the boundary. So I'm not doing the control B, and I'm just going to pull that down, insert again, and then maybe pull that out like so. Maybe let's add some details here in front of this engine. Uh, so alt click, oops, alt click to select the loop and sometimes it will select the wrong loop. Then what I usually do is I just do a shift click on the second one and then to complete or to um, continue that pattern you do a shift control plus and that will just zoop like so. And then we can do an inset and yeah, let's maybe do, if you do a, let me just undo that quickly. If you do a I and you do I again, it will either insert it like that, or you can press I and then it will insert each uh, individual face. So maybe for this one, let's do individual. And then I'm just gonna do extrude to the front. I'm, I've got no idea what I'm doing. And then with um, individual origins, I'm gonna scale them down and then maybe move them back slightly so it's kind of just these little little details like that don't know don't ask maybe let's add something in the center as well so if you insert ooh, insert that and then maybe we can scale them no uh, let's do extrude long faces maybe pull them in like that um, rivets around the windscreen. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. So I'm not really happy with this windshield yet. Um, <clears throat> I think we need to move this part up. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, just slightly pull that upwards a bit. I want more angle here, but um, I don't think that's gonna that's gonna happen. Maybe if we just pull this section up, and then we can pull that edge all the way up to there. What does that What does that give us? Yeah, that's all right. So let's do a save and let's see if we can do the little rivets. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. You can obviously do it with a uh, array and kind of have it follow either a path or a something like that. But I think let's just do the, the kind of the way that we did around the engine. So I'm going to add a few loop cuts. Um, let's maybe add a loop cut there and then maybe a few uh yeah about three i always add too many loop cuts but i don't know 
maybe like that. Um, I want to know if we must maybe rather do it separately. Yeah, let's do it separately. Just little spheres. That will probably work fine. So I'm going to create a... Uh, let's see. Cursor to select it. And I'm going to do a sphere. UV sphere. So that's not going to work. Because it's got mirroring switched on. So I will have to add them outside. And then kind of position them in. Um, yeah, let's do that. So, and then we can probably just duplicate them. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So, UV sphere, scale it down like so. Uh, let's scale them down a little bit more and then move them down. Okay, so let's say that's one of our rivets. Uh, let's just put this back to origin. And then let's see if we can array this. So I'm going to go to the modifiers, add an array. And then you can choose how many you want and also the factor, like how far are they apart. So maybe 1.4 and then maybe... Uh, I just want to add something like that. Cool, that's fine. Let's apply, let's apply that. And then these are now all one object, so I'm going to separate them. So I'm going to go into edit mode and then just select this one. Right click and separate selection. So that's its uh, object on its own. And now I want to array it all the way to the top. This is probably going to look very crap, but let's see. So array, and then for this one we want to go uh, not in the X, but we want to do Y and also Z to kind of go up. So I'm going to do one, what's it, 1.4. 1.4, and then the, we'll figure out the Z in a second. So let's just pull that up all the way to around the hair. Uh, let's just look at this from the side and then we can kind of just eyeball the Z or the height maybe uh, 0.7 no 0.74 yeah that looks looks okay and then we can uh, do the same with this last one so go into edit mode oh sorry I need to apply this first and then we select these ones going to edit mode and then press L to select all of those faces and we're gonna separate it out and then with this one we're gonna do an array again and that's gonna go the other way so minus 1.4 and then we just increase that again until we get too close to the center maybe nine or eight we should probably increase the array at the bottom as well but uh yeah we can do that now so that should be fine and then let's just do the same here so i'm gonna separate this one right click separate selection and then with that one selected just that one i'm gonna add another array and this time it's gonna be minus 1.4 on the x and we just increase that value yeah i think that's good and we can apply it so now this is all it's like separate objects so that one that one that one and that one i'm going to join them all together so right click and join let's do a save <coughs> and yep. and then what i'm going to try Ooh, what did i do there undo undo so this top section, I just wanted to apply that array and now I can select them all again, like that. Um, I'm going to try and join them quickly with our ship and see if the mirror modifier is working. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to join that with that, with that, with that. So right click join, so now 
this is all one object and now if we select our ship and we select the rivets and we right click join and that's not going to work undo so i think we need to select the rivets first then the ship then right click join yeah there we go then it will actually take on the <coughs> the mirror modifier so there's our rivets um obviously this one missing here so what i'm going to do i'm just going to select linked and linked and then i'm going to duplicate them and then z and then just pull them in kind of eyeball and there we go that's better all right so let's save that I was thinking of um, texturing this as well, but obviously we need to UV unwrap it first. So maybe I must UV unwrap it and you guys can see how you will UV unwrap something because that's always something that people don't know. I don't know. I find it quite relaxing. Uh, let me just see if there's anything else that we can add here. So maybe add same thing we did here to this bottom engine. Yeah, let's do the same. So I'm going to select these ones again. Shift control plus 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 to select all those faces. Like so. Yeah, cool. We're going to do UV unwrapping soon. Okay, so now we can just do another little inset. Inset, and I'm gonna do a II to insert individual like that. And then we're gonna extrude them out slightly forward. Um, and then we're still on individual origins. So I'm gonna scale them in. So just a normal S, scale them inwards maybe like that and then move them back slightly so G Y pull them back like so it's probably gonna be quite a mission to UV unwrap this thing but I'm gonna show you guys like a few different options that I use or a few different methods that you can use to, to UV unwrap pretty easily um, yeah so I think I'm kind of happy with the model for now let's save that and let's get into some UV editing or UV unwrapping. So first of all, because we have a mirror modifier on this model, you first need to apply that modifier before you're gonna do your UVs. I'm sure you can do UVs with a mirror enabled, but I've never done it like that. So I'm not sure how to do that. So I'm gonna just take the way that I'm used to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this model so just shift D and kind of just move it out of the way. So we have a copy if we want to go back. And I'm going to hide it here in the outliner. And now what we can do, we can select this model again. And now we're going to apply the mirror. So in the modifier stack here, click the drop down, apply. And now we don't have a mirror. So now we can kind of <coughs> edit anything we want. Okay, UV unwrapping. So, a few ways to do this. So, first of all, select your model and you're going to go to the UV editing tab here at the top. And as you can see, if I select everything, it's going to be a whole big mess because we started with a cube and we did mirroring. So, it's, it's all just a mess. So, what I like to do is I like to enable this little sync button here at the top, this little arrow. That will basically just always show all the faces and then if you select them it will highlight them so if i select say these front ones it's going to highlight them here and i can move them around here or whatever it kind of just shows me which things are selected so there are a few ways to do this um an easy way is to literally just select everything and right click and go to uv unwrap faces and then you have all these options and then you can always try this smart UV project. So what this will do is it's going to look for all the um, sharp angles on your model. 
you could actually set the angle limit here. So anything that's sharper than 66 degrees or sharper, it will mark those as a seam. And then it's going to try and automatically unwrap it. So usually I, I try this first. So let's see what happens. And then you can see it's not it's not bad. Um, it's obviously quite a bit of quite a bit of um, things we have here. A lot of islands, but maybe that's not a bad thing. But I think we can maybe do a better job. So the way that I usually do this is I try and um, like add seams where I think we need to put seams where we can kind of unwrap it. So let's see. So let's try and add a seam right through, right through the middle of this model. So I'm just kind of uh, pressing control and clicking on these edges to select them all, all underneath through like that. And yeah, at the front, oops. So like that, oops, not like that like so and then you basically just right click and you say mark seam and then it's going to turn red so that's a seam and then you can just go in and kind of just do this everywhere where you want to mark as a seam so you can go in here and I can select this this window area all around mark a seam and you can go in here and you can select maybe these ones all the way to the back all around mark seam and yeah i know uv uv unwrapping is usually pretty boring but it's just one of those things that you have to do um and then we can maybe add some seams there as well and then what you do is you basically just select everything so going to face mode select everything by pressing a and then just do a normal unwrap so uv unwrap faces and then unwrap and this is going to show you what is kind of working and what's not working so you can kind of just keep on doing unwrap until you until you're happy with it so let's add more seams so for these engines We'll probably have to do like a, almost like a cylinder unwrap. So you will do a, what we can do is select everything there and then press shift H to hide everything else. And now you can go and you can select some of these edges, maybe all the way to there. And then let's just see. Uh, so this one, select everything like so. And going on here this one this one this one and this one mark that as a seam and let's do the same at the top so let's maybe take this one all the way to there mark a seam um, and then this edge loop here at the back. So I'm just going to select all of that, mark a seam. Same at the front. So we can either do the inside or the outside. So maybe let's do this outside. Uh, come on. No, it doesn't like like that. <coughs> so you can just do a control click to select those edges. And then we right click and we do a mark seam. So let's see what happens if we select all of these things and we can kind of get an idea what we still have to do. So you can see uh, it's kind of unwrapping it. Uh, not nice, not nice at all because we need to create a few more things here. So I think we need to select hmm, a look from the front. So let's select those edges, mark a seam. So we've got this edge, Ooh, did we select that one? No, we didn't. Mark a seam. So you just kind of select edges, mark a seam, and then we select everything again, and then unwrap 
and unwrap. <clears throat> okay, we still have some issues with this section here in front. Mm, yeah, maybe let's add some more seams here. So I'm gonna take that edge loop and also that edge loop, mark them as seams. And we need to definitely create some more seams here. Maybe those ones and those ones. Right click, mark seam. Uh, let's see here. Uh, maybe these fins as well. So we kind of just select. What we can do is we can select this outside ring as well. Mark a seam. And maybe this inside. I think we did select that. No, we didn't. So right click, UV unwrap. Mm. And then these fins, we need to mark them as seams as well. So, ah, this is not selected. So I'm just going to select all of these as well. All around, like there. Mark a seam. All around, all around, all around. So, yeah, as you can see, it's a bit of a process. Um, but you can you can definitely do the smart unwrap. Um, it actually works pretty pretty well with most things. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of doing a manual thing currently. Uh, so let's see what we get. Unwrap. That's getting getting better, but still a lot of issues. What is that? Uh, okay. So with this section, I'm gonna select this outside edge up to there and that and that and that just see ya. It's okay mark that as a seam <coughs> and then we probably have to do these fins so I'm gonna select all of these edges and these ones Dunk. and these ones mark seam same with this side this one this one this one this one this one this one mark seam this one this one this one this one this one and this one mark seam okay same with the front so let's just zoom in there and then we're going to select some of these edges so it's only the one side and there mark seam this edge and that edge and this edge mark a seam let's see what we get so we select all of them unwrap okay it's not looking too bad you can see starting to do some stuff here uh what is going on here so if you kind of just if you see a an area of your uv that's a bit problematic you just select those faces and then you kind of go to your model and see okay so we're looking at this area here so i will probably have to add an edge dupe around this section uh, all the way all the way around and then all the way around right click mark seam okay let's try again so select everything by pressing a unwrap and you can see we kind of fixed that area so what else is here that we can fix maybe this this thing what is happening here where are we okay so why is this giving us an issue so we have the seam going all the way around. Mm, so we maybe need to add this inside like so, like so. And this one, no, not that one. Uh, this one. Do you select that one there? Yeah. Right click, mark. Oops. Right click, mark seam. 
Okay, let's select everything again and unwrap. And you can see it's not looking too bad. So let's go back to the main model and let's just do a select all again and then unwrap. Phew, yeah, you see this is a bit of a mess. Um, and it's not a mess, it's, it's just something that takes long. So I don't think I'm gonna go through this whole model, but as you can see, it's, it's not too tricky. It's just something that takes take some time that is the only thing i just want to ask a quick favor um every anyone who's or everyone is watching um if you guys like this content please click on that like button that's the only thing you have to do you don't have to subscribe you don't have to do anything else just click the like button if you enjoy uh seeing this this type of uh, live content on this channel um because YouTube is actually changing their algorithms quite drastically nowadays. Like subscribers don't really matter. Um, it's basically watch time and likes. So if you guys and girls won't mind, just click that like button. It really, really helps me. Okay, so I'm going to just do a smart unwrap for this one. So I'm going to select all the faces, right click, smart UV project, and let's go OK. And that's pretty, pretty decent. Um, you can obviously see there will be some seams every now and then where we don't want them. But for something like this, it's actually not bad to just do a smart unwrap. But as you can see, you can go in here and you can add your seams manually. Um, and it's not too difficult, but as I say, it just takes long, especially something that's got quite a bit of faces or quite a bit of details. Um, this is not very detailed, obviously, but the more details you add, the more time you will have to spend on your UV unwrap. Ryzen UV unwrap tool. Is that part of Blender or is that a, a like a third party tool on its own? Because I know you get some, there's some add ons for, for Blender uh, that a lot of people use. But uh, yeah, I don't really mind doing it. Like, honestly, I, I enjoy it. Like, I'll, I'll do like a smart UV project first and then I will kind of texture it and then all the areas that's problematic that I can see the seams or where the seams are not perfect I will then kind of fix those areas okay so Rhizome is a third party um, plugin or uh, application yeah I'm sure there's there's quite a few um, another third party tool that works quite well with Blender is something called FSpy and that's if you want to line up your camera with a photo or if you just like a still photo of a whatever and then you line up your your axes and it will place the camera and the correct focal length and all of that if you want to do like 3d models inside a, <clears throat> a scene all right so i think it's time to texture this baby let's add some textures so let's jump over to Safari and um, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> so I don't know, uh, this site texture even looks pretty, pretty, pretty cool. There's not too many textures on here. They have uh, like a decent amount, but nothing crazy. So if you go to metal, you'll only see there's like five, five things here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a quick two minute break. I'm just going to make some coffee, get some water, um, and then I will be back. So give me a few minutes and I will be right back.
and I am back. Hello, everybody. Let me just see if I have the right things selected here. Yeah. So, textures. Let's jump into Safari and see what we can do. So, yeah, I don't know. If you guys have any ideas for good websites for textures, please let me know. I've used this one before, this Texture Haven. Um, and then there's also Quixel, which is pretty nice if you, especially if you have a Unreal account, you can download them for free. So let's see if I can quickly sign in here. Sign in. Yeah, Quixel is pretty amazing. It's like high, very high quality scans. Um, oh yeah, you have to go sign in with Epic Games. And sign in with Epic Games. Choose your username and password. Login. And uh, yeah, here we will find some some amazing textures. So let's see products, uh, mega scans, browse mega scans. Okay, so here we can go surfaces, and as you can see, we've got some very nice options here. And if we go to metal, metal, metal. Uh, let's see what we have here under metal. So yeah, there's some cool stuff. Some nice painted metal. This green looks pretty cool. Uh, treated gun metal, corroded metal. So I think, hmm, I like this painted, scratched painted metal. Ooh, this is also nice, these metal panels. I think let's start with these metal panels maybe for the kind of for the main body so yeah you can choose your different sizes so 8k is a bit overkill maybe 4k should be good so let's download this one you can also click on this little gear and then you can choose all the whoops what happened now so if you go to the gear you can choose what you want if you just want the albedo or you want the normal maps or the bump maps or the displacement maps um ambient occlusion you can see it's crazy 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 so i'm just gonna go with let's do the roughness we can do metalness as well i'm not gonna use ambient occlusion displacement nah normal nah Let's just do albedo, metalness, and roughness. I think that should be that should be good. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And then we can probably just close this. Ooh, and then I don't know what I just did, but I'm gonna try and just download it like this. So I'm just gonna download this to my live stream project folder let's call this sorry i don't think you guys can see this but i'm just kind of saving this to a folder it's just downloading a zip file and then if we open up that zip file it will have all the like the elements that we that we choose that we chose when we clicked on that little little gear so yeah i've got the albedo and the roughness i think that's the only things we need so I'm just gonna okay here we go back into blender 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 and just want to see if we're on the right screen now yeah we are back so now what you can do is you can go to your materials little tab here at the bottom it's gonna save and I'm gonna delete this default material you don't have to and I'm going to create a new one and call this uh, metal. Metal one. And then under base color, we're going to click on this little little dot. And then we're going to go to image texture. And then we're going to open or click on open. And we're going to browse to that texture that I just downloaded. I'm just going to use the albedo. 
and uh, now if we switch to material preview you'll see that we have something something's happening um, obviously not perfect but now we can go into the shading tab and this is where we can kind of adjust some things so what I'm gonna try so here you can see this this one or not that one this one is the albedo which is basically just the what do you call it like the beauty pass or just the just the normal the normal not the normal just the the basic material and then what we can do is we can duplicate this node so shift d to duplicate and then for the metalness i'm gonna load the roughness i mean the roughness um, material and I think the roughness let me just have a look at that quickly the roughness is basically a black and white image so it gives you like darker and lighter sections of your image so we can change the color space to non-color and then we can output the this color to roughness I think that's gonna work let's see so I actually need like Let's see. Uh, yeah, I don't think we'll see much difference, but it's going to have like different roughness um, properties at different places on your material, basically. So now we can do stuff like we can color grade it a little bit so I can add in maybe like it curves so oh, if you want to search for something here it's exactly the same as to creating a new um, object you just do a shift a and then you can either browse through these drop downs or you can click on search and you can just type in the node that you want so now with this curves node I can start just kind of creating some a little bit more contrast um, cool and now we need some different types of materials for these other things maybe we can just add like different colors all depends what you want so I think let's start with these panels and maybe give them some some color so what you can do now is you can go to your material tab again and you can start creating new materials here so this we've got our metal material so now let's do like a just a normal black so i'm going to create a new material just give this a name call it black and change the base color to black or like a very dark gray now you can go and you can kind of just select different faces and then you literally just select that material black and then click assign and that's gonna why is it not doing it the sign hmm so let's just see a base color is that let's just make it yeah so it is actually working you can see there it's changing so because it's black we need to change the specular as well because it's kind of just reflecting some light and that's why it's looking like that so i'm going to go back to layout and I'm just going to clear all these um, these seams that I added. So I'm going to go into Edge Select Mode, so 2, and then A to select everything. Right-click, Clear Seam. And that will just clear all those seams. So let's do this with all these, um, these windows. So I'm going to select them. And I'm going to assign this black to them as well so we get that and maybe the inside of these um, of these engines as well so maybe let's just do a shift click and then select some of these maybe I need the top section there same with that and a shift alt click to select those ones so let's add the black material to that as well and what else can we make black maybe these edge loops here and maybe oops that's not gonna work so just uh, shift control plus 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 to do the loop and then the same here shift alt click and then let's assign that black to that 
and maybe these faces as well we can make them black uh, let's see what else we can do here maybe this top section of the engine same with this side to there and assign that material to that okay so what else can we do here maybe these little fins on the engines so if you select these top faces like that and that to grow your selection is control plus and we can assign the black to those as well and maybe to these top ones as well so just select those two faces and then those two faces and then control plus black assign okay so we have our basic metal and black materials I think we need like a almost like a chrome as well for certain things yeah let's create a nice chrome so I'm gonna save so new material call it chrome chrome and I think for chrome you just leave it white and you increase the met metallic value to one and we've got a preview here we can actually see what we're doing and then you can bring down the roughness all the way if you bring it down all the way to zero it's going to be a mirror so it's going to look like that um, so maybe we want like 0.1 for the roughness so it's gonna maybe even 0 0.2 0 0.25 more like an aluminium type of vibe yeah i think that's fine so just a nice little metallic clean metallic aluminium type of thing so now i want to select all of these little rivets uh geez that's gonna take some time uh let me just think easier way to do this because they're all part of the same object now um Probably not an easy way to do this. There is probably an easy way to do this, but um, if I look at this from the side, yeah, I can probably do this. And then I s change my selection by pressing W. So you can do box select, you can do a circle brush select, or you can do a, what is this called, lasso. Yeah, lasso will probably work. So now we can kind of select them like so and then we just need to deselect some of the stuff here so we can deselect these faces and those faces and those faces and those two faces so then I'm going to assign this new chrome or aluminium or whatever we want to call that to all of these ones. And if we're going to, yeah, that's looking pretty nice, nice and shiny. And let's do the same with all of these ones. Oh goodness. That's going to be interesting. So let's see if this pattern select is going to work. So if we select let's say that face and then shift select that face and then shift control plus 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 it's actually working look at that so it's picking up that that pattern and then we can do on the other side as well so this one shift this one shift control plus 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 and you just go all the way around like so and now i want to grow that selection to select these other faces as well so you can just do a control plus and that should select them on both sides and then let's give them the chrome chrome vibes did it change undo assign and there we go and maybe the same for this thing here in the center so that little cone and shift alt 
that little cone and then maybe do a uh, grow so control plus control plus control plus control plus and then we assign the chrome to that as well okay we've got some more fins here that we can make black maybe so i'm going to select uh let me just save again so maybe select those two those two faces those two faces those two faces and these two and the same on this side so shift click to select them and then we're just going to do a grow so control plus to select all of those and then assign the chrome I don't know if that's the right choice, but anyways. So I'm going to do the same with these insides here. So shift, alt, click. And then maybe let's grow that selection slightly. Chrome. Mm, same here at the bottom. So shift, alt, click. Grow. And assign the chrome. We need some, some other colors here as well. Maybe, um, maybe some white metal or something. Mm, yeah, let's go back to this um, Quixel website. So I'm just going to change my camera to Safari. And then let's see what else we have here. Maybe something that's got a bit of color. Um, I don't want like texture. Ooh, these rusty, rusty metals are always nice to have as well. I think let's, let's try this. So I'm going to click on the little gear. And we're just gonna need the albedo diffuse. That's probably the normal or the kind of it's the default material that you'll use. But yeah, that's fine. Albedo, metalness, roughness. That's cool. So, oh shit. Which one was it? Rusty. This one. So we're going to download this one quickly. I'm going to save the zip file somewhere. And I'm just going to extract it while we go back to Blender. And let me just extract this quickly. Metal, rusty. And there we go. And I'm just going to copy them to the right folder. Okay, and then we can just delete Oops. those ones, delete. Okay, so we are back in Blender and let's create a new material. So I'm going to go new material slot, new material, call this Rusty. And then we're going to go down to base color, go to image texture and then open and then browse to that texture that we just downloaded the rusty rust and then if you look at the preview here you can see uh, we've got some nice rusty metal going on there so i think for that we need to maybe some of these bigger parts um let's test it on the un under underside so i'm just going to change my selection back to box select and then we're going to do a select that face control click that face and then shift and then control again to there and then maybe let's do one grow so control plus yeah let's see maybe we don't want to select uh, hmm. maybe let's just undo that and do a control minus just to select the bottom section first and see how that looks like. So rusty and then assign. And you can see we get that texture there. Well, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Let's see if we maybe do these side panels as well. Uh, assign them. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to look amazing. But let's see. Rustiness. And maybe let's add them here around the window as well. So that one. All of these faces. 
rustiness. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. I'm just going to take down the specular. Because we don't want the rust to be very reflective. So we'll probably have to increase or add this material to a lot of these faces here behind it as well. So it kind of doesn't look as weird. Okay, so this is just going to be like a very old used ship. Um, maybe all of those faces and maybe those ones. Let's add this rusty material to that as well. And then we'll probably have to do the same with the front. So I'm going to select all of these faces. So all of those. Shift Alt click those ones. <clears throat> Sign them there. Yeah, it's actually a nice, nice texture. It's not bad. You can see some of the seams. No, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Not too bad. So we'll probably have to. Okay, what I'm going to do here? I'm going to do a Alt. Um, hmm. Just select all of these around. So Shift Control Plus 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 Plus. What's happening here? like so <clears throat> and then I'm going to grow that selection control plus plus and then I want to deselect the middle sections again so I'm just going to manually deselect those ones and those ones and those ones and then assign the rusty to those edges as well we select all of these things all around mm, like so Deselect those faces and then select these faces, those ones, these ones, these ones, everything there. And we can do these fronts as well. So just shift and drag. And then we can assign our rusty, rusty material. And then we'll probably have to do the same with the wings because um, it's not going to make sense to only have the front of the ship very rusty hey so i'm just going to select all of these faces around and then control plus to grow that selection and then i want to deselect these ones again uh oops shift 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 like that and we maybe let's make that black yeah. Save. Okay, the wings. So for the wings, I'm going to select those faces at the edge. Same with this one. And then on this side, so shift and then control. Shift and control. And then we can do grow selection. So control plus, 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 plus. Maybe like that and then we just need to do some manual selections here in front um, maybe just those faces and those ones and we can select those faces and those faces and then these ones and these ones right and maybe those ones in this face and this face hmm bottom as well so we're just gonna select all of those and all of these and shift and then control and then shift can probably do these ones as well uh those ones all of these ones. So I'm sure there's a quicker way to select this, but for now, <coughs> I'm just doing them manually like this. So we can add the rusty to that so long. And then we need to and select those ones. And select these ones. 
and select that one, control click to there, and then you've got these faces on the side. Okay, Rusty is sign. Um, did we select, why did we not select these ones? And the same with this, so select those ones. Rusty, sign. Yeah, it's looking, looking okay, I think. Let's see. Hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> so, what else can we do here? We can maybe take some of these, maybe these indents. Same on this side. So this one, this one, this one, this one. And we can make them black. Yeah. Uh, now these engines. So I'm going to select these bottom engines by pressing L. And I'm going to make them black. And then we probably just need to move them up slightly. So just L, L, and then G, Z, just to kind of push it through that top area. And these bottom things, maybe let's make them black as well. And then the insides we make chrome or aluminium again, like so. And then I'm going to make these, oops, so that. Sometimes if the alt click doesn't work, you kind of have to do the manual, manual selection. And uh, this one, I'm going to click shift, shift, and then shift control plus, 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 plus. And go all the way around and I'm going to make them black. Assign. <clears throat> okay, then I want to create a new, just a normal white material. So like a, just white. And we can make it like a little bit more metallic, maybe a little bit more shiny. And I want them for these side missile things. So first I'm just going to select all of them. So just pointing to them and then pressing L to select all those faces and then L and then L. And we're going to assign this white material to them like that. And then we can obviously go in here and we can add some other details. Um, oh yeah, we've got these two, these little half moon thingamajigs, like so. And we assign that white paint or white metal to that. Okay, so we need to decide what are we gonna do here in the center. So maybe this should all be just a rusty, rusty rust. Um, there, control click. And then those ones. And then that and that. And that and that and that and that. Rusty sign. Just save that. Uh, we'll probably need to do these side ones as well. Okay, so this whole ship is just like one big rusty rusty ship sign a sign how's everyone doing everyone's still awake if you guys haven't clicked the like button please do so it really really helps me a lot um, yeah, YouTube is pretty strange nowadays with the way that they show your content to other people. Um, yeah, it's getting it's getting difficult to get views. All right, so we're gonna assign the rusty material to that as well. And what else? Maybe some more chrome here in front rather than these black. So maybe there. And then those ones, maybe white, yeah, 
Ah, it's maybe not a bad choice. Maybe let's do the same here. So Alt click and Shift Alt click and then White assign. What do we have? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Should we try doing a quick render? I think so. Let's. Uh, we need some some something that emits light. So I'm gonna add another material, and I'm gonna call it blue emission. All right. So with this material, I'm just gonna go all the way down to emission, change it to a nice light blue, and change the emission strength to about mm, I don't know, like three. And now we can assign. Uh, we can assign this material. I'm just going to enable bloom and ambient occlusion and screen space reflections on the uh, viewport render, so we can kind of see what it's going to look like. So I think if we select these ones again, oops, that's not going to work. Uh, those ones. And we go all the way around and then maybe let's do a one grow and then we assign this blue emission to that so immediately you can kind of see the shine there so if we go to render view and i'm just going to bring the background down so you can kind of see how that looks so it's kind of adding some some glow i don't know if that's the right color though maybe let's do a different color like a green yeah maybe not the strong so maybe just one for the strength maybe two to get a little bit of glow and then we'll probably need like a sun so I'm just gonna add a normal normal light and then I'm gonna add a sun so we get like nice harsh shadows from the one side so i'm just going to move this off to the side and then just pull this to one side so we kind of get shadow on the one side and light on the other side and then i want to add some uh, little some galaxies or some stars or whatever what i actually did yeah i added a we can do it hdri um, I'm just not sure what type of HDRI. So <clears throat> let's just add a normal HDRI quickly and see what, what we get. So I'm just going to save that. And I'm going to do a environment texture. And I'm going to open. So I'm just going to try a... I don't know, like a warehouse or a carpentry shop. This is quite an interesting one. So... If I bring the strength up, you'll be able to see this HDRI. So it's like a workshop type of vibe. So a lot of metal and rust and lights from the top and so on. So this might work instead of a sun. Let's just uh, switch off our sun. We can actually delete the sun. Yeah. Delete the sun. And then I'm going to bring this brightness of this HDRI down to like 0.2 maybe. Uh, maybe 0.5. And then we can hide the HDRI in the background. To do that, you go to your <coughs> your render settings. And then you scroll down to Film. And then you click on Transparent. Yeah. Like so. So it will basically just hide your HDRI. So when you do your renders, it's not going to render the HDRI, which obviously you don't want. And, um, yeah. So that's pretty cool. And uh, let's see if we can add our, I don't know how this is going to work, because I want to create a sphere, like a massive sphere, almost like an HDRI, and then have the inside of that showing the, um, the galaxy texture that I actually downloaded from the NASA website. You can download like a 8K or a, yeah, I think it's like 8K or 16K or something, um, which is pretty cool. But if I'm going to do that, I'm going to block the HDRI, I think. So, let's see. If I add like a sphere, if I do sphere, 
and I just give it some more sides, maybe 64 by 64. Might be a bit too much, but anyways, when we scale this up, uh, it looks like the HDRI is actually still affecting this. Yeah, it does. Okay, let's see if we can do this. So on this big sphere, I am gonna add a new material. Oops, on the sphere, and I'm gonna add a new material there. New base color, I'm gonna load the image texture, and that's gonna be the the galaxy or the Milky Way. It's a 8, 8K, 8K Milky Way texture. I don't know if this is gonna work, let's see. So this is now on the inside of the sphere. Obviously we need to just pull down the specular because we don't want it to reflect like so. It kind of works. It kind of works. What do you guys think? It's not too bad. Oops. So we can obviously now scale the sphere up to, let's just see what scale we're looking at. Like 500, 500, 500. And we can see a little bit more details. Yeah, so we kind of get that. That's looking okay-ish. Let's add a camera. So camera. And um, obviously your camera will be, will be added in the center of your scene. So if I do a, uh, where's my camera? Yeah, so the camera is gonna be, uh, there's my camera. But an easy way to kind of sync your camera to your, your viewport or your view is you kind of just move around and let's go back to render view. And let's say you want to have this kind of angle right here. So all you can do now is you can go to view and then go to align view and then align active camera to view. And that's gonna basically take your camera and it's gonna sync it to that specific view. So you can see now we're looking through the camera and it kept that exact, um, that angle, which is pretty cool. So now we can go in here and you can press N and um, oh yeah, we need some some engine glows at the back. Yeah, definitely. So I'm gonna go to view, and if you click this camera to view, because currently if I if I move away, it's gonna move out of my camera. So if I press zero on the keyboard, it's gonna go back into the camera. And then if I tick this box, this camera to view, this lock. Now I can actually move my view, and it's gonna lock my camera to that view which is pretty cool so let's do something like that and then just remember to unlock it so if you want to move it's not gonna move it's gonna keep your camera in that position so let's add some emission glows here at the back so I think for this one we need a different different color okay so that's obviously not blue anymore so let's make this green and then maybe what color should we do blue I think blue is always kind of sci-fi ish so let's add a new material slot add a new material call this blue emission like so and this one we're gonna make quite bright so emission color nice and blue and maybe strength like 10 let's see what happens so I'm gonna select all of those ones yeah blue is blue is the color we're gonna go for awesome and then shift alt click and then shift alt click shift alt click and we can maybe do those little inside insides as well eh? why not like so and we're gonna assign blue emission assign there we go so obviously you don't see it now from the back because we're using EV um, which is the render engine so we can try and do I'm gonna switch to cycles quickly but if it messes up my audio 
please tell me in the in the chat i don't think it should but because it's using a lot of uh cpu i i've got a graphics card but i'm on a mac so it's a bit of a weird story where it doesn't really use the graphics card when i switch to cycles it's it's a weird thing but yeah anyway let me know if it messes up anything so yeah i can see it's not really adding any glow there so we'll probably have to add some lights there as well just to kind of mimic <clears throat> mimic that so let's try this so i'm gonna go into solid view and um <clears throat> let's see if we can add a light here so i'm first going to place my 3d cursor on that face right there so shift s cursor to select it and now if i create a light uh light and maybe just a point light um now the light's going to be right there so i can move it back slightly and then we can make it very bright so like 5000 uh yeah and then make it blue give us some nice see again yeah it kind of it kind of works better because now we get a little bit of a fall off on to the other sides as well so i'm just going to duplicate this duplicate it over to that way and then select both of them duplicate them then z pull them down uh whoops now we're outside outside the sphere or oh, where are we i'm just gonna hide this sphere for now okay so now zoom in there so we've got our lights they in position yeah it's good cool so that's our lights which are looking pretty nice and i think let's do a a quick render so just the ev render nothing crazy so i'm going to go to my render settings uh render 64 that's fine I'm not going to use any motion blur we can maybe add some volumetrics i know there's no volumetrics in space or like fog or anything but i think it will add some some niceness to our glow so yeah cool there we have our first render obviously that's our little friend there in the back that we can hide so as you can see uh, in the outline we've got our cube which is our ship and then the second one is hidden but it's still rendering so what you can do is you can click on this little filter at the top and you can enable the render view as well this little camera so now if your normal hidden and your render so if i switch off that cube on the render view and i do another render then you will see that it's not going to render that that object so let's add some uh, some fog some volumet volumetrics volumetrics so what i'm going to do i'm going to place my 3d cursor at the world origin first and um let's just save again so now we're going to do a create a cube just a normal cube and i'm going to scale it up so i'm going to just check from the side scale it up and then scale it in the y-axis and I'm just going to go into uh, wireframe or x-ray mode and then just move this so it's covering our ship and <coughs> let's scale it in the x as well we can scale it a bit bigger because this is going to be the area where our fog is going to be where our volumetric volumetric why can't I say volumetric tonight okay so now with this box selected i'm just going to call this fog we can give it a volume um, material so i'm going to go to materials new let's call this fog and now if you scroll down you'll see you've got surface um we've got our normal surface material or um, what do you call it like a shader 
And if you go all the way down, you'll see we have a volume as well. So we don't want a surface shader. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna say remove. And then under volume, I'm gonna create a new shader. And for this one, I'm gonna select let me just see which one we need to select. It's probably, uh, it's probably the principal volume. Yeah, I think that's the one. Yeah, let's go into render view and you can kind of see already we have something happening here. It's not looking great. Uh, if we go into EV, it's probably going to look better. Ah, into cycles, I mean. Um, hmm. It's a little bit dense. So if we go to that material again, under volume, you can see it's got a density. And currently the density is at 1. So I'm going to bring that down to like 0.1. Yeah, now we're getting something. So even less dense, 0.05 maybe. And let's switch back to EV and see if we get something. Yes. See, so now we get that volumetric effect because we have the this thing. So just one thing that I want to do here, I want to select this volumetric thing and go to object, apply scale we haven't done that yet I uh, just want to see hi uh, Zays welcome so you want to know how to link two objects so if you move one then the other one moves as well so that's basically par parenting so very easy to do that I'm gonna show you how to do it with my with a ship and the camera so I'm just gonna move the camera out to there. So what you do is you select your child object first. So in this case, it's the camera. And then you shift click on your parent object. Oops, not, not that. Uh, I'm just gonna hide this fog quickly. So you select your child object first and then shift click on your parent. And then all you do is you right click and go to parent and then you have all these options and then you can just do a normal object parent so right at the top so now if i select my ship and i rotate it you'll see that my camera is rotating with it or if i move it around my camera is going to follow it and if you want to link oh and you can also see if you look closely um you can see this dotted line between the camera and the ship and that that's your relationship uh, line or something what do they call this yeah relationship lines so <clears throat> that's basically showing you that's your your parent is that what you wanted to know um, yeah so it's, it's pretty simple you first select your child then the parent and then right click parent object and then if you want to break that relationship you can right click on your child and like so parent and then you can go clear parent or you can do if you did like a move or a rotation with your parent you can do a clear and keep transformation and it's gonna not kind of snap back to its original um, <clears throat> post let's have a look through our camera again and I'm just gonna lock that cool no problems eh? so I'm just gonna get a different camera angle Let's go to render view and then let's switch on our fog okay i'm gonna do another render quick so it's just ev so <clears throat> there we go so it's obviously kind of low poly um hard edges i didn't bevel anything so uh, what else do we need? I don't really like these green, these green things. <clears throat> I think let's make them blue as well. So a cool thing, what you can do, oops. Say you want to select faces um, on your model that's got a specific material, so the green emission. So I can go to my materials and then I can click on that material, so green emission. 
and then you can simply just click on select and that's gonna select those faces for you and now you can go blue emission assign and that's gonna assign the blue emission to that so maybe that's a better thing to do um, <clears throat> maybe we need some emissions here on these engines as well so I think let's do that so I'm gonna select all of those faces and all of those faces <coughs> excuse me and then shift alt click on those and shift alt click on those and then I'm just gonna grow the selection again so control plus uh, maybe one more like that and then we let's apply the same the blue emission again to that so yeah not too bad not too bad so maybe what we can do um, on the sides maybe nah I don't want to add more or too much detail there now yeah I think I'm pretty happy with with this what we have made just gonna change the camera angle slightly so we kind of looking from the top can we still see the or the stars or whatever you call them oh I think I made it hidden yeah so let's do a render again cool yeah so you can see we can actually see the the little texture in the background it's obviously the scale is not a right cause yeah it looks those stars are a bit big we can scale them down so we can go to our sphere and <clears throat> then we can go to uv editing and let's just change this to render view so we can see what we're doing and now we can go into our uvs select all of them and we can scale them up which means it's gonna probably tile our texture let's just do a render again might be a little bit too big or too small um, yeah uh, they're there definitely there you can see there in the background um, <coughs> maybe let's make the fog a little bit less dense so I'm gonna select my fog go to material and scroll down to density so currently it's 0 0.025 cool thing about blenders you can actually type in formulas here so if I want to divide this by 2 I can just put slash 2 and that's gonna divide it make it half as dense and we can maybe uh, half it again so slash 2 divide by 2 and uh, let's have a look <coughs> Yeah, I think that looks a bit better. So you can see a few more little stars here around it. Uh, I can see some stars there. So that's that's looking pretty cool. Right, I think that is the end of this stream. So yeah, I hope you guys um, enjoyed the stream. I hope you guys or oh, learned something. So yeah, it was very basic stuff, but you know what? It's it's sometimes fun to just create <coughs> little simple models like this, which is not too crazy to do. Uh, really easy to to kind of follow along and create your own little ship from something else. So obviously, we used the X-wing uh, reference, as you can see uh, on there. But um, yeah, sometimes you just kind of go and you can create your own randomness and um so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it i just want to ask one little favor if you watched until the end please click on the little like um underneath the video that really helps me a lot you don't have to subscribe or anything like that because yeah youtube doesn't really care about subs subscribers anymore um it's more about watch time and the likes so if you guys can please just click on the like button that's all you have to do 
it will really really help me a lot so yeah thanks a lot for watching thanks for joining me um on the stream tonight um i had some fun it was really cool and what i'm going to do i'm going to share this blender file in the discord server so if you go into the description of this video you'll find an invite to the discord server and um yeah i want to kind of try and see if we can build a little 3d community there and um uh, what do you say? I'm surprised you don't wear spectacles yet. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting story. Um, I used to get quite a bit of like headaches if I'm in front of the computer for like a whole day because I, I am in front of the computer the whole day because I, I do my work and then, yeah, do my other stuff as well. But what I found that really, really helped a lot was to bring down your screen brightness to around 50%. Um, it's weird, like, I, I've been using computers, I don't know, like, since the middle 90s, and I've always set my screen brightness to 100%, and it's not good. So bring down your screen brightness, and if you can, do something like night shift. I know on the Mac you can just enable night shift, and it will kind of make your screen a little bit warmer. Um, that really helps a lot for your your eyes and also if you get um, some headaches so yeah do that that works bring down the brightness and uh, make your screens a little bit warmer anyways thanks a lot for watching and please click the like button and i hope to see you guys next time on the live stream i will uh, what i'm gonna yeah what i'm currently doing is um, i'm kind of testing out different time zones so i'm not going to go live every friday it might be on a wednesday it might be on a tuesday i'm kind of just trying out different time zones and different times to see where i can get the most viewers so i'm kind of testing yeah just testing different different things but follow me on twitter because i always um post when i'm going to go live on twitter so you'll see my twitter thing here on the bottom of the screen somewhere it's just ruan lotter r-u-a-n-l-o-t-e-r Follow me there and um, yeah, you'll see when I go live. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you peeps next time. Cheers, bye.